Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another vidIQ live stream. Two in one day. Who knew? Um, we had a technical issue, and we use a software called StreamYard. It's why we can do all this fancy, fun stuff with the screens and, and bringing in Savage and you know all that cool stuff, bringing up your questions. And what happened was when Savage left, he made a Savage exit and took the whole stream with him, apparently. That hasn't happened before. And when that happens, it closes the old stream, which means we need to start a new stream. So that's what I had to set up, and that's why we are here now. For those watching the replay, though, what this is is the rest of our Q&A. We talked a lot today about privacy. That was the previous live stream. So please go and check that out if you're joining the recording and you're like, what the heck is this weird stream that came up? Please go check it out. We're going to be answering more questions here from our live audience about privacy on YouTube. And joining me for said conversation, Mr. Viper's here. How's it going? I found my way back. I found my way back. <laughs> back. Um, yes. And uh, Emily will be returning in just a moment. So if you would like, you can ask your questions with the hashtag question, and we'll be able to see them in chat and uh, address them accordingly. I'm still working in the background on getting everything back up the way it was. So bear with me here, but please do ask your questions. Uh, again, if you're watching this on the replay, there was a whole live stream about privacy on YouTube. I'd highly recommend it, but we are going to continue answering some questions with Miss Emily Baker. How's it going? There she is. Uh, oh, she's muted mute, again. Muted again. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you. And there she is. So I, uh, yeah. It, I, I took a moment. <laughs> it's always it's always good to get a moment. Uh, so not an expected uh, moment. I didn't expect that at all. Nobody well, did. Nobody did. Um, but it was we we had a good laugh about that in the background. Uh, so do apologize for the second link. Uh, all right. So uh, we're going to be answering some questions. Yep. I think. Let's see. We have a whole no, bunch I, of questions that came. I got, all I got one that I want. Uh, the question I was about to answer before we got yeeted. I saw oh, okay. Majad Art say, I was totally confused. I mean, same, all of us. <laughs> yeah, we were all confused. Did you like, already say what happened? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we got Savage, that. Savage, Savage did. Yeah, basically. So <laughs> the question I'm about to answer before we got yeeted, uh, somebody was asking about doing parody sponsorship. And this is interesting because, you know, when you're a new creator and you don't have sponsorship, um, it can it can kind of be a good idea to do like like practice runs, you know, because even though you don't have sponsorships in place, brands are still gonna watch your content. And if they see that and you they see that like that parody sponsorship, they may have a good idea of how they can fit you into their plan. Now, the important thing to note is that if you're going to do that, make sure you make it very clear that it's not our actual sponsorship, but you just it's just like a it's a parody. Because you don't want to be pretending like you have an actual sponsorship when you don't. But Doing like practice runs, that's actually a pretty cool idea. I've heard of creators doing that in the past. There's a, I can't remember what it was called now. There's a podcast I listened to. It was like a, you know, those uh, murder mystery podcasts. It was a parody one. And so they did, like, they did say the stream is sponsored or this podcast is sponsored by so and so. And they were using the names of real companies. And uh, it, they were doing these hilarious ad reads. And I, I, I was wondering the whole time, and I probably couldn't have gone and looked this up, but I never did. I, are these, are they really sponsored and do they have a deal with the marketing team on this company? Like, by the way, I'm going to like make a, a mockery of you or are they just saying they're sponsored, you know, because the podcast was pretty big, so they could have legitimately been sponsored, but uh, it would be clear if they were just making a mockery of them and they didn't, you know, weren't really sponsored. It was very clear. It was parody. And I'm sure on the legal side, on their website or wherever, there was probably something that they had put in writing, you know, to try and like defend against that. Though yeah. with some sponsorships, they say you can you can add as much of your own personality, your own context, your own whatever to it. And I'm very clear with sponsors and happy to be doing more of them. Like, look, this is my content. This is the way I talk. This is what my audience is. Um, if I can't be a little bit cheeky with it, we're probably not a right fit and you don't, like my audience isn't a right fit for your company anyway. And that's you know, cursing on, well, cursing in life is just who I am, but cursing on my channel is a choice. And you know that there are some sponsors that are like, that will never work for me. And there are some sponsors who are like, uh, we love it, just uh, do whatever. And so it it really 
it really depends on the brand. And that's what finding those good working relationships are. And I rather have a longer working relationship with a brand than just somebody going, oh, could we just do this? Um, just a one-off and then move on. So it matters. Um, and to answer the question now, uh, the, the our contract was very quickly renewed. <laughs> once, once we agreed never had to have you on again, our streaming contact with, contract with vidIQ was renewed instantly. Uh, That's all right. glorious. That's fantastic. I love um, live streaming. Calvin asks, is it okay to give opinions slash review a product that I found really useful or do I have to ask permission first from the company as a very tiny YouTuber? No, you can make clear that these are, you know, something that you bought on your own opinion. I, the entire beauty genre of YouTube would would crumble. So would like the planner community and the subscription box community. There are so many review communities. Reviews are absolutely a valid use of a product, whether they are glowing or whether they are critical. And you can say, this isn't sponsored. I paid for this myself. And you can always say, but if you want to, I'm down. And then share that video out. Share it at the company, at them when you share your video. Um, I'm sure Viper has stories of not just himself, but creators he's worked with who have found giving those types of reviews as a way to get your foot in the door with companies you want to work with. Yep. There, there was a uh, creator we talked to on the podcast uh, who, who touted the same thing. They basically were making straight up like ads for different products, people they would like to work with. And even if those particular companies weren't on board with becoming a sponsor of his content or affiliated with him, it was still a great portfolio piece. Like this is what I, I'm capable of doing with these products, you know? So as you go and approach other potential sponsors for your channel, like this is what an ad for your product might look like. So yeah, it's, I wouldn't do too much for free just as a, a rule, I guess, but that that's just me. The, the yeah. more free work you do, like, you know, there, there's a, I think there's a balance there. The other thing is that if you buy a product or whatever, buy, uh, if you buy the product or service yourself, you have full car blush to pretty much do whatever you want. However, what I will say is if you are going to put your thoughts and opinions or review out there about a particular product or service, you better make sure your information is hundred percent correct because if you're out there giving the wrong information. Eh, when it's going to become a problem, but as long as you're giving accurate information, you can do what you want to do. Absolutely. 100%. All right. Calvin, that was a great question. Yes. Thank you, Calvin. Great question. Hashtag question. If you want your question answered, we're taking Q and a, we're doing Q and a for another 15 or so minutes. Yep. Um, let's see here. Um, I saw Yo Music ask question, how useful is an official artist badge? I don't know what that is. Also, you can ask once. It's okay. Don't try to distract the ADD member on the, the stream. We don't, <laughs> we'll get it. Don't worry. We'll get it. Yes. I don't know what that is. Um, that is the little music icon some music channels get next to their name. I don't know personally because I don't know enough about music channels how you acquire that. I'm guessing it could be the fact that maybe you publish songs on... The, you know the youtube audio library but i'm not i'm not too sure it does it does kind of look cool it makes it, it has adds this like layer of like legitimacy like this is a music channel i just don't know the steps to get that and then from there what you unlock with it if anything i feel um, like youtube has like two completely separate parts of youtube or like three like youtube originals feels like one place on youtube yeah. youtube music feels like a completely different youtube and then there's like the YouTube that I live in with tech channels and makeup reviews and commentary and actual like creators that I follow. And then there's like YouTube shorts, YouTube. I feel like it's kind of all of these like different platforms where you kind of fall down a rabbit hole depending on what your mood is. But I'm always, look, when I hit 100K, yes, I was excited about the play button. Yes, I was excited to hit that level of subscribers. Yes, I'm still surprised that many people watch my channel and I love it. But the little tick by my name meant the most to me just because when people try to sell you some kind of crypto saying that they're me, you now know it's not me. So mm -hmm. for me, the things I've done to build trust with my community, it's really important that there are ways for me to show that it's actually me. And that little like icon tick that verified um, helps me maintain, you know, maintain my channel and be protective over what I share and what I put out. I imagine that the official artist badge is the same thing. It helps you build trust with your community. Now, if Twitter and, and Instagram would just get on board, it would be 
It'd be yeah. epic. That'd be great. It, it's really cool. likely because you're on the YouTube Music app because there is a separate app for YouTube Music itself, and similar to Spotify, similar service. Maybe if you are an artist on YouTube, that's that's what that means. Like you could, you, they can find you on that app because they are two integrated services. So, sorry, Viper, were you trying to say something? I was just saying, real, real, you, real, Emily, please stand up. That's right. <laughs> we we like look i'm not gonna lie when i say there are times i very much appreciate a little bit of external validation and the little verified check mark on youtube is external validation and i appreciate it i also love the little apple badges every week and every month i live for those <laughs> external validation is very motivating that's why i like video games it's like look bing bing i've leveled up <laughs> <laughs> they, they've gamified it. Yeah, like uh, those gamification uh, tactics that YouTube and other platforms use. Definitely, you know, that who who doesn't want to work towards the 100K plaque? Absolutely. It works. I My only problem is, you know, people, a lot of people with ADHD also do very well with like reaching for those bench markers and myomarkers because novelty helps our brains be like, ooh, there's this thing that I'm shiny, that I'm going after. And I find that YouTube's gap between 100K and a million to be way too long for validation. It's like, can't, where's the middle ground? Come on, YouTube. It's like, there, I, I need there to be middle ground of things that you like levels you unlock. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's just me. All right, 500 subscribers for the community tab now. Uh, 10,000 for stories. That's very cool. And then 100,000 for the... Um, play buttons it's kind of like these weird gaps and then the community tab will eventually be open to everyone i'm bet i'm betting stories will eventually open up to more people too if they keep doing it because stories and shorts are so similar it's, it's weird so um but yeah youtube's a definitely a fun place <laughs> when it comes to gamification it, it's 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 very strangely segmented yes uh all right so this one i think you or viper are probably better prepared to answer this than i am I have a company sending me products to review. Should I have gotten something in writing? No. At least an email. I yeah. mean, if they're sending it to review what their expectations are, what if you don't like it? Would they prefer you not make a video? Um, I don't always re receive and accept free product for the purpose of, hey, we'll send you this to review um, without saying, if I'm going to review something, it's going to be my honest review, what have you. But making sure there's a communication, at least an email helps so that there's clear expectations. Because what you don't want to end up doing is have them send you a product to review. You film it, you edit it, you get ready to upload it. They see it and it's already been live and gotten views. And then they're like, oh, we don't love this. Can you change that? And you're like, wait a second. We didn't talk about whether you would approve it before it went live. We didn't talk about what your expectations were. So making sure there are clear expectations. If the expectation is we're going to send it. If you like it, you do. If you don't, you don't. That's fine. Then that is something in writing. So as long as there's some communication email can be enough and um making sure that you save those is helpful oh, viper emily, emily is better than stories. me emily is better than me because it, it's not getting that deep of it's just a review if you send me a product to review i'm going to review it we're not we're not doing all back and forth and all this jazz now if you want to pay me money then we can go all back and forth right. and do all that jazz but, but there's companies that will do that to creators and oh, say, i'm sure they will do this, They'll try. Do this? <laughs> and if you don't know as a creator to say no that's not what you said when you sent it to me you can feel like as a creator, especially if you're a newer creator to getting stuff sent to you for free, you can feel obligated and end up spending more time and energy than what you would have just paid for the product at, yeah. at, in the first place. Um, and so I've seen creators in very unclear brand deals that are doing three and four re-edits of things. And it's like, no, that's you, this is now costing you money to do this thing for this brand. And that's not okay. Yeah. So nope. Communication, clear communication is key in all things. And it's okay. I would rather lose a brand deal because I've asked for clarification than go into it not being exactly clear on what I needed. And I've gotten better at that as a creator saying, oh, well, what do you mean by this? And what do you mean by that? And is there exclusivity? And how long is that for? I want to know these things at the beginning. And most brands are happy to say, oh, this is what we mean and clarify it for you. Don't feel badly asking a few more questions. And if they're like, oh, this is too much hassle, they're not the right brand to grow with you in your channel. Yep. All right. So Square Table Generate Podcast asks, how do you feel about the YouTube Generate thumbnail for real? I think they're perfectly fine for live streams, a screenshot from the interview or the show. 
Um, yeah, it it, it depends. Um, for non live stream videos, no, no, absolutely not. Um, you should always make a custom thumbnail because, as I've told you guys over and over on these live streams, the thumbnail is the first impression that you make to a potential viewer. And if you're just using a random generated YouTube thumbnail, then that shows that you don't really care about the content. And why should a potential viewer care about the content if you don't care enough to put an actual custom thumbnail in there? So, uh, I would not do that. For live streams, I mean, I would almost, I would almost consider making a custom thumbnail for live stream. But to be completely transparent with all of y'all, I don't make custom thumbnails for my live streams. I just, I just, I do. It's, it's a, it's the, I just throw the channel banner up there. But I do my too. live stream channel, I'm not really trying to, I'm not really care about growing it. So that's why I don't really put that much effort into it. But Unless, if I am, if I am doing like an emergency stream where I am running really late, I'll just let it be the channel banner. But I generally make custom thumbnails when I know my topics. <clears throat> and sometimes I'll go back and fix them after the live stream if I don't get to a topic or add another one. But I find that when YouTube, and I can see it now in my analytics, when YouTube starts sharing out my stream that it is live, I can now see um, when it starts getting picked up and seeing what that click-through rate is. I believe that for my channel, having a custom thumbnail with the topics that I'm talking about helps grow my streams. Mm -hmm. And my streams average... Uh, about 5,000 uh, live viewers over the entire course of about a two to two and a half hour stream. So I feel like I know something about streaming. I love streaming, but I think that the thumbnails really help. I'm actually in the process of going back to my older live streams and adding custom thumbnails to them because at the beginning I did not do that. Um, and I've experimented with it and I would mm -hmm. say experiment with it. Yes. YouTube's not going to punish you for trying it this way than trying it that way. And doesn't vidIQ have a split testing feature? I don't. I don't In thumbnails, think I think you do. Um, do we? I'll I'll double check that because I never. I that's the thing. I never. I would never use it if we did just because I never think about it. It's, that represents making two thumbnails. <laughs> that does require making two thumbnails, um, but you can, and in vidIQ, you can also look at how your thumbnail will perform against other thumbnails in the segment. We so definitely have that. See yes, what's going to yes. stand out, but I think there's, there. I I would have to go back and look at it because I don't have the time there, to make two thumbnails anyway. Look, when yeah. we were at Vid Summit and Mr. Beast is talking about spending 10 plus thousand dollars to make the right thumbnail and how much thought goes into it, I'm like, and this is why you're Mr. Beast and I am not because my <laughs> thumbnails reflect the type of channel I have, which is a live streaming channel. We move quickly. My mm -hmm. thumbnails have a similar vibe. So you're going to know it's my channel. Sometimes my face, sometimes not. But you should be able to look at my thumbnails and know, oh, this is what she's talking about today. These are the people that these are the lawsuits that she's talking about. And that does improve that click through rate for me, especially with an interview show. Um highlighting your guest is a benefit of coming on your podcast then mm -hmm. because it also helps them grow all of the advice i've seen from people who grow streaming channels um the the best advice they can give no matter what it is you're streaming is your stream should have a just like a video it should have a clear purpose uh for gaming it's a goal right like so you would tell your audience up front today we're going to um survive 10 days in minecraft hard mode hardcore mode right like and if we don't something terrible will happen you would then want your title and your thumbnail to reflect that goal so that people potentially new people who've never seen your channel before see that and they don't have to question like th is this just another person playing minecraft with no right no no discernible goal or is there something interesting is there something at stake and on YouTube versus other streaming platforms, you have a very unique opportunity to use a custom thumbnail because it's a thing you don't get to do on Twitch, right? Like you can't, you on Twitch, you are subjected, you're subject to whatever freeze frame it picks in the moment when somebody goes onto the browse page to look for you. There's no custom thumbnails, but on YouTube there are. And so you get to be in control of that. And I think that sacrificing that control of your content and letting whatever pop up there is fine if that's what you want to do but i i personally like emily said i've tested this as well i've tested on this channel i've tested on my personal channel and when i do the right combination of title and thumbnail i've noticed the concurrent viewerships of streams go up i've noticed the view the play the replays go up and if you're not putting them on your streams in the moment but you're leaving up as replays you are advised to then put a thumbnail on it because it's surviving on your channel as a replay so you're going to have to make one anyway and you should have a clear goal during your stream anyway. So why not just get that thumbnail out of the way? I do understand it represents more work. And it, it is that whole Twitch versus YouTube thing. Like, well, if I streamed on Twitch, I wouldn't have to worry about it. But the reason YouTube's discoverability 
and they're so far ahead of Twitch in discoverability is because of things like thumbnails. That's why people love YouTube for streaming because thumbnails, because search, you know. So it's a it's, an, it's a discoverability function that you are free not to use. They put something there for you. They put your banner there for you, and you don't have to think about it. But in Emily's test and my tests, I'm sure Viper, when you do experiment with thumbnails, like you, you got to say, like when the stream is a clear goal and a clear purpose, that means that means a lot more to a viewer, a potential new viewer who's never seen you before. And if you're not streaming for the sake of growing your channel, then <laughs> so. That's my opinion. I mean, when I do when I do my podcast, I do have a thumbnail of me and the guests and the thumbnail just mm -hmm. so people can know what's going on. So yeah. Yeah. It I I can There's totally a reason relate. Books have covers that aren't just a blurred page of text. Yes. Right. It's to yeah. it's to bring you in and kind of give you it it sets the stage and it sets the expectation. I just uh, again early on in streaming when I didn't have time, I didn't do it. I've noticed a huge increase since I have done it. It's always worth testing. I don't think you have to spend Mr. Beast level time on thumbnails. If you have time, there's a lot of nuance to thumbnails you can dial down. Mm -hmm. I tend to look at what the other thumbnails in my space are doing um, and then make sure that mine will stand out but have a similar feel so people are like, oh, I'm in the right, like, oh, I'm in the right place. It's the reason businesses have signs outside. I'm in the right place. And yeah. that's how you want your audience to feel. Just make it easy for them. Yeah. You have a podcasting channel, so it's super important, I think, because discoverability for podcast channels can be really tough. It's super important to to think about these thumbnails, to test out different things if they're not working, uh, because with a podcast, especially if you have guests on that are not very well-known people, you then have to frame it in a different way. Like, yes, it could be a picture of you and your guest, but if no one necessarily knows who your guest is in the in the wider sphere of that community, then what else could you put there related to the conversation you're about to have as a podcaster? You're probably doing prep for these interviews, go into your questions and think about like, what's the coolest question here that I'm going to ask, or what's the coolest topic we're going to cover and make that the title in the thumbnail. It doesn't have to be the whole podcast. The whole podcast can consist of a hundred questions, but pick the best one, pick the most intriguing one and, and focus your title and thumbnail on that. And once you kind of reverse engineer the thumbnail creating process in your head, then it doesn't become as intimidating. And then you're kind of like, oh, okay, cool. Like I can I can definitely put together a thumbnail on this topic that we're going to cover today. All right. So we have time for one more question and it's going to come from Viper. Could I have a question from Emily here? Emily, can you tell us the story of how you arrived at the color purple? How I arrived at the color purple? Um, I was chatting with my audience as my channel was growing. And last November, my channel grew by over 55,000 subs, which feels like a lot when you go from a 5,000 subscriber channel to like a 60,000 subscriber channel in a month. And we were doing different little milestones as we hit uh, kind of subscriber targets just to celebrate with the community. And I made a joke on a live stream, like, what are we going to do at a hundred K and I'm like, you know, I feel like we should do something crazy, like just dye the hair purple or whatever. And the law nerds were like, yes. And I was like, Oh yes. And, um, <laughs> it feels like I should have been born with purple hair. I love it the most. Um, it's very clear now that I am not a lawyer that goes to court any longer. I've done that. I've lived my best life. And now I get to live a second career in my best life doing legal commentary and I love it. So that's how we got to purple. We have plans for 200K. So the hair will change substantially at 200K. And then whether I go back to purple or not, I don't know. But I just, I love it so much. And um, I'm going to leave it. It takes a little bit of time and effort. But I don't care. I love the purple hair. Wait, wait, wait. So we're, we're, we're you want to stand out on a panel of lawyers when you've got 10 lawyers giving legal commentary um, when you're the one with the purple hair that has purple lights in the background and I go to blue when we do vid IQ stuff, but, um, it definitely stands out. And I got numerous text messages and emails when I was doing that stream. Cause of course the, the legal, uh, commentary streams hit 80 to hundred thousand viewers each time I was that we were all on. I got so many messages like, Oh my God, I looked up at my screen and there you were with the purple hair on the stream that I was watching instead of the news. I was like, yes. So. So I used to not have purple hair, and now I do. Epic. Just We're looking at the thumbnails. Weird. I know I need to change. I need to change my channel banner now that I have changed my hair. Um, 
I, I, but I left, I, I don't know. That's my OG channel banner. So like part of me is kind of torn and part of me is like, no, it needs to change. My, my, my personal channel banner is so outdated. And every time I go to my front page, I'm like, oh crap, I forgot again that I need to update that. It's just so in the back of my mind. Oh man. Well, this I is know, Emily's now channel. I feel like it's retro and I should just, <laughs> <laughs> I should just leave it. But yeah, my older videos are me with not purple hair. Uh, this is Emily's channel. It is linked down below. Um, Emily, thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much. Oh, it's already time. It's time. It's time. I have to hop off because I have to get on a call. So y'all, all right. I have to say goodbye. I know we normally get to chat afterwards, but I will email you. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for being here. Law nerds. Thank you. VidIQ for always mm -hmm. making the best shit to grow your YouTube channel. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, Emily. you for being here. Thank you, everybody. We will see you next time. Thanks for dealing with the technical glitches as well. <laughs> Catch you later, everybody. The tech glitches were special. That, that was special. fun. Mm -hmm. Or savage. It was savage. <laughs>